It's kind of funny to think about, but I'm actually completing that trifecta I showed in my second episode. Something I had no real intention of doing, at least not knowingly at the time. God, I hate that episode. I seriously need to redo it someday. But what can I really say about The Simpsons that hasn't already been said? Nothing. You just can't do it. The show has been around for over 26 years now. When it aired, it was met with a lot of controversy, mainly because of this guy. Some families wouldn't even allow this show in their home. Yeah, could you imagine that? The Simpsons at one point was the boogeyman of TV that should be avoided and protested at all costs. But over time, and probably thanks to South Park coming into existence just to show how tame The Simpsons actually was, the show has grown into one of the most loved and cherished franchises in TV history. You know very well, when this show finally announces that it's done, that's a series finale everyone is tuning in on. It may be on a lousy channel, but The Simpsons are on TV. Now, I've said this many times now, so it's kind of redundant to say when it's common sense, but shut up. When something's successful, merchandise falls, and of course that means video games, and holy hell, there's a lot of them. But when it comes to The Simpsons, it's a lot like comic book hero video games. A couple winners, a whole lot of losers. And in the case of Hit and Run, I find it kind of falls in between. When I first got the game as a kid, this was a fan favorite between friends and family. For whatever reason, this is what people around me wanted to play. Even I can understand, The Simpsons even then was a timeless classic that was beloved by just about everyone. And the game's theme was based around fan service. But I was always puzzled. I always thought, why the hell do they always want to play this game? I could never understand why. But after thinking about it now, I realized none of my friends or family ever played past the second level, and most of them never experienced what I did. They only witnessed the good, never the ugly. I suppose I'll start with what I guess can be considered its origins. Back in 2001, Radical Entertainment released The Simpsons Road Rage, a game that played very much like Sega's Crazy Taxi. Actually, it played so much like Crazy Taxi that Sega kinda sued Radical for patent infringement. Yet despite the plagiarism, Road Rage did surprisingly well. So with that kind of momentum, they couldn't really stop there. But they certainly couldn't make a Road Rage 2. That'd be fucking suicide. Quite the rock in the hard place. But luckily, this was during a time when Grand Theft Auto was making waves in the gaming industry. GTA 3 and Vice City were all you ever heard about, and for good reason. Both were some of the most praised games of that generation, and it opened up a new genre that even to this day a lot of games use as a basis. Luckily, Road Rage's gameplay wasn't too far off from the style, and with some changes, Hit and Run was able to feel similar, yet new. Essentially avoiding rip-off, with more rip-off. Oh, you were just doomed from the start, weren't you, game? So, our story begins with a green light beaming a bunch of robot wasps that begin to record and spy on Springfield. One stumbles upon the Simpsons' house and soon meets its demise to Homer. Much to his surprise, he finds- Ma! Ow! Hey, hey, Ow! Sound Dark much? Jesus Christ, that's one thing about these pre-rendered cutscenes and this one in particular. They're too damn loud. So loud that they sound a little distorted at times. Given yeah, this isn't a big deal in the long run, it's borderline nitpicking, but for fuck's sakes. Great start, game. So you first take control of Homer in, huh? Uh-huh, huh? Hey, well, damn, I don't even have to explain the game. I'll let this little shit do it for me. Press the A button to jump. No, I like this. Way to go, Homer. Oh, You're the another man. one. Okay. Okay, come on now. Yeah, I'm turning you off now because that's fucking ridiculous. Like a lot. Stop. Hey, come on now. Get the hell out. Come on. Get. Get. <laughs> I fought down. Oh, you did, eh? Ow! So Hit and Run's gameplay is still pretty much based around Crazy Taxi's concept and that the main focus is reckless driving. But with the change in focus, it's more about completing missions which usually include racing, smashing into opponents to either destroy them or force them to drop items, or you have the stalking missions and the very sparse on foot missions among the others to progress the story. In fact, being able to explore on foot was a very appealing aspect to a lot of people because the game is hands down the best representation of Springfield to date. Being able to explore the city and finding out the little nods and gags from the show felt like an adventure in its own right for any fan of the show, because they didn't skimp on fan service. Hell, there's a gag counter in the collectibles. Mix this with normal collectibles to be found, like coins to buy new cars and costumes, or the seven cards scattered in each level. You'll spend hours taking in everything Springfield has to offer. So, like we've seen, Stage 1 takes the role of Homer in a pretty self-contained story. We see him do some chores, smash Mr. Burns' car to avoid being late for work, and later on, Homer starts noticing black spy vans, which turns out to be pizza vans. In the end, Stage 1's story is, like I said, pretty self-contained for the most part, and something you'd probably see from an actual episode. Well, maybe not with so much awkward standing in that weird head, dopey, head bobbing shit. Shut up. Now, some may be thinking, why the hell do they call this hit and run? 
Well, probably not, since you've seen me run down probably over 50 people at this point, along with some domestic abuse. Yeah! Ha ha ha! Fuck you! <laughs> yeah, the main gimmick of this game is hit and run meter, so if you hit anything breakable, other cars or pedestrians, the meter will fill up and once it reaches its max, the cops will start chasing you and give you a big ass fine of $50. Now, the fine isn't the aspect that hinders you. There's an infinite amount of coins to find at all times. It's the cops that start chasing you that are gonna screw you. When you're freely roaming the city, you shouldn't really care. It's when you're doing missions that it becomes more interesting and irritating. You're gonna run into stuff. There's no getting around it. You're gonna hit people, cars, and breakable shit. It's the way the game is designed, especially once you gain access to faster cars. This means you're gonna have to start developing a good balance of reckless speed and precision as you drive, race, smash, and blow up other cars. This becomes essential because the cops can just destroy your attempts at completing missions if you can't maneuver around them successfully till they go away. So this gameplay element alone changes how you must approach each mission, and provides a lot of the challenge this game offers. So on to stage 2 where we now take the role of Bart in his quest to find a copy of Bone Storm, which turns into getting Trekosaurus up and running. Like stage 1, Bart's story is pretty self-contained as well. But in terms of missions, there was clearly a higher focus on fetch quests this time around, which got a little boring after a bit. I mean, hell, the bonus mission was about finding blood for aid. But in the end, stage 2 was a fairly comfortable experience. But this is also where you start to see hints of evil this game has in it. Like here in this bonus race. I am doing my best, practically near flawless driving, and I still couldn't pass that little bitch Lisa. This happened a couple times actually where the game just says, Fuck you, you ain't winning this time, you little motherfucker. <laughs> so after Bart manages to help get Truckosaurus up and running and nearly dies, he disappears in what is clearly a UFO abduction at this point. So it's up to Lisa to save the day and on to stage three, and speaking of stage three, it can go fuck itself! Oh, I fucking hate that goddamn level! God, I hate stage three, the difficulty spike here so... Oh, it's so stupidly dumb! Stage layout sucks ass and it's confusing at times, the missions suck ass too! And now we're gaining access to faster cars, which means you're gonna start fucking faceplanting that ugly that I was talking about earlier! Because now you get to experience the weird and buggy hit detection while you drive! You see this shit? Not fun! In fact, it's fucking infuriating when you lose because of bullshit like this! Story-wise, this stage is all about finding Bart. That's it. You don't even get a cutscene. That's how much thought went into Lisa. And the missions, well, they're either really stingy on time, or they're forcing you to constantly go through these high hit and run areas such as here. Or in this case, the game decides it wants to put you to a grinding halt just to get you to buy a costume just so you have to wear it for one fucking mission, and chances are it was all for letting players know that costumes were a thing. Jesus fucking Christ! This isn't the only time the game will force you to buy a certain costume or car to proceed, but it usually has flow to keep the game moving. Here it's like, okay, go on to the next mission, get ready to start. Wait a fucking minute there. You can fuck off and get a costume, then come back and we'll talk. Stage 3 just sucks all around, and I never look forward to this part. Stage 4 is where we take control of Marge, and her part of the story is focused on trying to figure out why Bart was abducted, and what caused Bart's mind to be controlled. Yeah, when Lisa finds him, his mind is kind of fried. I'm guessing too many wasp shots. I don't know, I had to include killing the wasp or coin somewhere. In terms of difficulty, it feels natural this time around, and in terms of missions, March is probably the most enjoyable, because they allow you to be a lot more aggressive as quite a few of those missions are about smashing into other cars. In fact, their last mission is all about destroying cola trucks, and there is seriously nothing more satisfying than landing a strong hit that damages them pretty well, then sends them careening into a tree and basically killing themselves right after. The music for this mission is pretty good too. Say what you want about gameplay, which is really good by the way despite some of the glitches. You cannot say one bad thing about the music in this game, I don't care if it's subjective. The music in this game is really well done. For a game like this, you'd think it would be all generic Simpson sounding themes, and while you do have a couple of them, the range is so distinct and fitting for each character and mission. For Homer and Marge, you have a more relaxed and humble sound to them. Honestly, it sounds closer to what the show would actually play. Bart is all about rock. Most of its missions have it playing, it's playing when you're roaming the city, and when a mission involves auto in some way, that rock gets even harder. That's just... I don't know what else to say, but that just fucking rocks. But I'm totally intended to a shutty. Lisa has her jazz, which it works, and it's catchy enough. But what really surprised me was a poo and the music that's connected to him. His themes were definitely ethnic, to say the least. Now, that's not what surprised me. Honestly, I'd be more surprised if it wasn't. What made me do a double take was how much I liked it. In fact, it borderlines the rock tracks as the best themes in my opinion. But all in all, it's a really solid soundtrack for a game you just wouldn't expect to have it. 
Stage 5 starts a poo, and his story is more of a continuation of Marge's, as he too will be trying to figure out the cause of these strange occurrences. In terms of missions, Apu is definitely more focused on precision, as he's going to be doing a lot of stock missions and racing style missions. But there's just one mission I have to ask... Why? It involves having to team up with Snake to destroy an armored money truck. At first you're thinking, fuck yeah, and hey, another smashing mission! Then you soon realize that this truck is the most durable car in the game, and you'll destroy your car long before you even put a fucking dent in yours! In his, shut up! So after a few good smashes, you have to wait and wait and drive slowly down the highway till you find a wrench to continue smashing it. And then you do it all over again about two or three more times and it's so boring. What in the hell were you thinking? Yeah, I agree. So at this point of the story, Apu runs into Bart and they both discover at the museum that the cause of these strange happenings was because of the Buzz Cola product that King and Kodos has spread into Springfield. They did this because Earth is a reality show that is failing in terms of ratings. So doing this will spark stupidity and chaos into the city, in hopes that it'll make the show popular again. It actually sounds a lot like that episode of South Park called Cancelled, which I found out there just a few months before this game was released. You're just asking for another lawsuit, aren't you, Radical? So once more we take control of Bart as he tries to let everyone know about the alien invasion, and oh boy oh boy oh boy, we're back in my favorite part of Springfield! What shit are you gonna throw me in this time?! Oh. My. God. Okay, you know the game is literally taunting you when it fucking flings you into poo-poo. At this point of the game, what can I really say about the missions? They're pain in the ass for the same reasons they were the last time I was here, and the level design hasn't fucking changed a bit. At least you gain access to the Ferrari that has that perfect amount of speed and control, so there's that, I think. So, after the many failed attempts to warn Springfield about what's going on, Martin Homer managed to find Kang and Kodos, which revealed that this call is able to raise the dead. So now we are back into the role Homer, and this game just turned into a treehouse horror episode. That's fucking awesome. And oh my, I seem to can't get away from Halloween, so watch part 3 of my Halloween special. Yes, this was intentional. No, it fucking wasn't, but go watch part 1 and 2 anyway, because it'll help me out so much, and I love you forever, and yes, 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 yes. Go watch. <laughs> Zombies have overrun Springfield and developed the Halloween theme, and it's up to Homer to save the day. This is fan service at its best. Going with the Halloween route to finish the game was a great idea, and I don't think anyone is going to complain about this choice. <gasps> Why would they put in fucking realistic spiders like that in a fucking cartoon game? It doesn't make any sense! And come on, look, look at that thing! And Jesus Christ, why the fuck does it have to be spiders? Anyway, despite the awesome Halloween theme, except for those fucking things that I just can't seem to get away from this year, be prepared to suffer though, because this is the final level and it's gonna make sure you know it. A few missions are okay, but when you get to these missions where you have to transport toxic waste to the spaceship to blow it up, this is the true test to see if you learned that perfect balance of reckless and precision driving. You have to be quick and your driving has to be perfect because any somewhat hard hit on anything and you lose that waste and you have to start over. Which means a constant redo and a constant stream of swearing! But if you succeed, then congrats, you beat the game. If not, well... Fuck. Fuck. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Fuck right off. What the fuck was that? Are you for fucking real? Like, look at that! I hit nothing and I lost it! At the end of the day, Simpsons Hit Run wasn't a bad game for its time. I'm sure there's some people out there that probably still think it's the best Simpsons game going. It definitely has its problems, but if you're willing to overlook those problems, Simpson fan or not, you might get some enjoyment out of this title. But, it's nearing 5am. I'm tired, I'm sore, I hurt from falling off this stupid thing, especially my ass and back. So I'm out of here. You guys have a good day, or night, or whenever the hell you watch this. I'll see you around Christmas. I just want to say to anyone who watches this, you're awesome. And if you liked it, you're even awesomer. You know what could be even better though? Checking out my other videos, because I like to think they're pretty good too. And while you're at it, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up to date with all the things related to DBG. That's Dirtbag Gaming, just so you know. <laughs>